Welcome to my guide on how to do player on ports. It's also short for just ports. As for the requirements, you will need one of the following skills 90. And that will be agility, construction, cooking, divination, dungeoneering, fishing, herbalor, hunter, prayer, runecrafting, slayer, and thieving. Notice that thieving does have a little asterisk by it. That is because if you are an iron account, thieving is the absolute fastest skill to get to 90. And that's by using the safe cracking method. And of course, the more 90 skills you do have, you're able to access more missions, storyline progress. It's just to access and start the content, you need one skill in the level 90s. For players that have access to the Fort Foundry Lodestone and have built their command building, you're able to enter it and go to this very first building right here. And you're actually able to manage the ports table, which if you just click on it, it brings you up this little interface. However, Let's say you're doing PVM and you just started this. The missions will take about 15 to 30 minutes and you don't want to be going, leaving the boss and then just running to this part. So instead, right click teleport. And it will bring you right here. And then I'm just going to exit. Because if you do not have access to the Fort Foundry Lodestone, you actually want to make your way to Port Serum and then just run north to where I'm at on the minimap. And then once you're here, you just enter that strange portal. And of course, that flag was in my way. So as soon as we're here, you want to go north east we'll be speaking to duncan our navigator but instead of speaking to him right click and then reclaim log this is so you can get the captain's log which you can put in your offhand pocket slot if you want but i just always like to bring it with me now there are eight there are six little icons on the top of the screen you want to click on the crew roster and then right here to the right side, you're able to refresh it. And then there's a chance, depending on the island you do have, that the resources. So let's say you're starting off at the very first spot. And you'll need chimes along with like cherry wood, bamboo, azura, jade, stainless steel, those resources. So... As you progress further into the islands, you want to actually upgrade your crew members before anything. And then you can just click it and then just recruit it. Just make sure you do have some space. If your whole crew roster is filled up, you can right click and dismiss them. And don't worry, there is a confirmation. So in case you ever mess up, you'll be perfectly fine. And then, since you are starting out, you will have two ships unlocked. So, we'll click on our very first ship icon and we'll bring up this. What I like to do, since this is very basic, is you want to have your crew members pretty much all in the same category, which, let me check if this one. Nope. Okay, so... Let's go to this one right here. And I will put all combat. So click on a person and then you can drag it to all five locations. So notice how I have all combat except this one because I don't have another combat person. We want to close the crew. Now we will edit the ship. This, it kind of depends because you will be upgrading as we get further on 
to the content. So basically just unlock what you can and then make sure, again, since my crew, I have them all for combat, I'm going to make sure every single thing is set to combat. Now, once you have upgraded everything to that one Pacific style, and for those that don't know, if you do upgrade it for the deck, it will unlock it for both spots. So, that it saves resources because you don't need double it. You just need a one-time fee and it unlocks it for both. And then my crew is again all combat. So, we'll now go to Voyage List. Right here, there's two options to do. This special, I highly suggest you try to do that as often as possible because there is going to be story progress missions and extra bonuses from here. So, well, for example, it just gives me a Zoro. But if I look down right here, it will give me an XP of 35,000 for the Tenru which I forget which skill that one is. And then there's a standard, which this it remains the same forever for the very first three missions. It's just these special voyages, they change daily. And these are the only way that you're able to get the scroll pieces for recipes. Now, let's go back to standard. And we'll click on pretty much whatever I want, and you're able to refresh it. Keep in mind, you're able to refresh it up to 15 times daily. And since you're first starting out, you won't have a good crew, so you just want to focus everyone on one plot. And right there, since I refreshed it, I already got it on combat. But I'll do another one, just so you know if, like, let's say you only have moral, and you want to just keep flipping until you get moral, just like this one right here, in which case you can set your crew that has that, so it has the highest percentage. It won't be 100% most of the time, but it will be at least 80 plus, and then you'll just want to send them off. And then when you do send them off, keep an eye on the duration, as this one right now would take three hours. If you are starting out, they will take about 30 minutes, in which case you have to check them fairly often. Now, let's say you're not actually at ports. You can read the captain's log. It will open up this interface. You want to click on the boat that says return, and you'll gain access to it. And then you can hit the arrow to go to the next ship and again close it. Go to the voyage and just like before you're able to send them off without actually being at the area. And I like to do this well when my iron was first starting out I would kill let's say bandos I would last about an hour I would bring the book and in between kills since it takes a 30 second spawn time you have plenty of time as long as you're out of combat, so it gives you about 19 seconds of a window, each kill, that you can just work on. So it's not that you have to teleport to Port Serum every time, it's just this book helps it so much. Now let's go back into the Ports Portal. Again, on the top of the screen, there will be the little voyages, which I just showed you. There's your crew roster, which you can hire people. And a daily captain, which you can just re-roll. Now, if you are first starting out, you won't have access to that. So you just want to keep an eye on if the captain is good or not. The next one would have to be the upgraded buildings. I skipped the shipyard because we pretty much just went over that completely. So we'll go to upgrade buildings for here. It does require different resources based on the island that you're at. And as you progress, you'll be able to get access to cherry wood, 
and Jade so that you can upgrade the areas to give you bonuses and it does gain access from getting two ships to three to four and also as you're doing missions they could give you a little boost like 10% extra resources and then once you're in the cherry wood and jade you'll have access to the totem hotspots this is very very good because you'll want to do the jade statue so that you can get the ancient bones as often as possible however if you're going for the trimmed completionist cape or completionist you want to send it to the clue voyages and then you can have a total of two no wait total of four of those hot spots so you can have two jades and two map statues or you can just have all four of each for a plus 10 percent chance and then there is upgrade icon hotspots number one two three and that's it so for these ones it's a, it's useful for attracting a specific npc that you want and the reason why you want to attract them is let's say the whaler and the biologist they can only do two missions together you can't have like a third one for that one so let's say you have all 90 and you have all 90 skills you have a total of 12 adventurers visiting you daily and there will only be a max of three so you want to increase whaler and biologist as much as possible so that they're more likely to spawn out of two of the three so that you can do the trio i mean dual mission and then lastly the last one is just like portal just for no reason just looks i guess awesome and we'll go to port management right here when you're first starting out you'll be at the arc and then as you do let's say about a couple of days you should unlock the skull which gives you gunpowder the next one gives you hook and then cypher cherrywood the bowl for jade the princers for stainless steel the loop for terracotta and the shield for azura now let's say you're actually doing this and you need uh, stainless steel so you want to make sure it's highlighted and this only happens if you're for far enough into the islands that you're able to choose previous ones that you have been in so I'll click close go to voyage list and now when you see when I refresh there we go that is how you get the stainless steel missions and then again let's say you got all the stainless steel and then you need maybe the black slate select that go to it and refresh and voila there you go stain uh, the steel slate so this is for when you want to upgrade your buildings which i will show and then right here if you go one more these are all the recipes you have unlocked each recipe sadly has four parts so it's going to take a very long time and if you do have those map tables for the hot spots instead of these jade statues you'll be kind of more often to get them as it's 10 percent more often now when we go that's it this very last one in the archipelago map I did max it out all the way but basically let's say you're just starting out and it's zero percent once it goes to a hundred percent you will unlock the very next region and that will be for the bamboo or the gunpowder and then once you get 100% you'll unlock the next island which would have to be for the black slate then the cherry wood then the jade and etc you want to 
Well, it takes about six to nine months to actually get to the furthest end of it because it's very long of a grind since it's pretty much time locked. And then with these resources, you can see exactly what all you do have. And then the visitors, just in case you want, for instance, I got the Trapper, the Tengu, and actually, I think that's it. Okay, so I only got two of them, so those are eh, so so. And then I know I accidentally sent out my ship, but if you do click out, well, if you click the little pencil icon, you can edit and change their name. So it just depends what you kind of want. I mean, you don't really have to name or anything. You just like choose it, save, and then he'll be known as the bloody ship, the creaky ship, and the ballastic. And then I accidentally did close out my stuff, but you will see I have three hours left. After the three hours, you're able to get the results that I did show you, and then you'll get the resources based on the island. And we'll go back to the crew roster, because right here, you will want to focus on your crew first. Then you will want to focus on your ship's deck, because that increases either your combat, moral, or seafaring. After that, you want to do the whole, and then I think it's the front of it. I'm not sure what that is. I think that will be the helm of it. Afterwards, the last upgrade you'll want to do is the rudder, which is, increases speed. Once you have your crew as high as possible, or if you're, let's say you're on the fourth island and you've got a new crew member, and the uh, ship mission's success went from 80% to about 50%. What you can do is go to port management. And again, let's say you were on the bowl. You want to go to the skull, which is very low tier. Refresh it. And since it requires less resources, usually... You'll send your guy there once that mission is over and you claim him. You can level up from one all the way to level four or even five instantly each. And that is a good way to power level your crew members if you just got them. And then make sure to just click back the bowl and then so that you're able to maintain the mission that you were on before. Because hiring your crew members does bring them all to level 1, however their stats is a little bit higher than what your previous crew members were. You just need to focus on those. With that, thank you all so much for watching this guide on how to do player on ports pretty efficiently because you can even bring the book to PVM with you and I did talk about the order and the upgrades that you are able to do with player on ports. With that, Thank you all so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment as it really does help.